So welcome to Byte 12 of the Python game. In this game, we're going to learn what Python environments are, why they are good to use, and how to actually install one in Anaconda. This is very similar to do it in other places. If you understand the concept, you will be fine, okay? But Anaconda makes it a little bit easier to actually manage it. We're going to do some parts manually, some parts automatic. So yeah, let's get started. So first of all, what is a Python environment? And I think the best way to explain that is to go back for a second to, for example, Excel. If you are doing things in Excel, you never ever or very rare have to think about, will this work in my version of Excel? Microsoft is a single company and develops the product Excel and makes everything backwards compatible. So you don't have to think about if this function will work in version 2007 of Excel, right? It just works. When it comes to Python environment, you need to think about how it's built. So you have Python built by a core team, and then you have, well, these are the teams doing all the other packages. So you have one team for Matplotlib, you have one for Pandas, you have one for NumPy, and all of them, they continue they continuously develop the software. So there comes a time that there will be incompatibilities between the software. So the one that goes ahead is the Python uh, project. So I, right now they are at Python 3.12 and they might introduce something there that will break what Matplotlib does if they are using that specific thing that they are not using it anymore. And then that's when you start running into trouble. So to make sure that your software always works, what you do is you create like boxes. This is my game box. In this box, we're going to put Python 3.9. We're going to put, we're using Matplotlib 3.5. We're going to use Pandas 1.4, but maybe Pandas version now is like 1.6, who knows? And they might or might not be compatible. So what you do is you put it in the box and you don't update. Well, you can try to update, but it doesn't update by itself. So you know that as long as you keep these versions, your program will work, okay? So you have, when you're creating these, you have these versions. Let's say that you need a package that is old that needs uh, Python 2, so you can create a box where you put Py Python 2 and everything else. And this Python 2 and this Python 3.9 can live together and do whatever they do because they don't collide with each other, hypothetically, okay? Okay, so how do you create environment? Okay, so in Anaconda Navigator, they have tried to make it easier to create environments. And it is a little bit easier, actually. Um, so if you go to, you normally you're here at home, if you click on environments, you will see that I have two environments. The base one is the one that comes installed, and then I created one for YouTube projects. We're going to create one for our game, and then we're going to move everything there. Well, you don't really need to move it, but we will develop on that environment. So what you do here in Anaconda, you do create, and then you just write the um, the name of your environment. So it's, for us, it's going to be crime game. Don't put any spaces in there. It's just paths and spaces, not good. And then here you can choose the version of Python that you want to use. They have up to 3.11. We haven't tested 3.10 and 3.11, so we're not going to do that right now. We're going to keep the 3.9 that we've been working with. And then we just click Create, and it will install the base of Python. I'll show you what it does. So we have the new environment here, and we're going to go to our terminal. And as you can see, here it says crime game. So if you open the terminal there, if you open the terminal from, from here, it will open on the right environment. Normally that will not happen. So if you go, for example, to Anaconda prompt, something that got installed when you install Anaconda, probably what you've been using to install your packages, you can see that it comes with the base as default. And then if you want to go to the crime game, it's actually quite easy. You just write activate, and then you write uh, crime game, and then click enter. And 
you see, it goes from base to crime. If you want to get out of there, you do conda deactivate, and it goes back to base, right? So we're going to close these. We don't need it anymore. Now, let's see what got installed. To see that, you can do conda list, and it will give you a list of all the packages that got installed. So as you can see, there are not a lot of packages that got installed. An environment just sets you the basic packages, which is Python and pip, and a little bit more, and then you're good to go. You see, SQLite is actually a part of uh, Python, so cool. Um, here, it tells you where in your computer the the files are stored, the environment files. So you can see there is public Python on a con. So you can actually go and check. So you can see here the path, and this is the files that we've created for storing the environment. Now, let's go back to Anaconda for a second. So let's go back to Anaconda for a second. I want to show you something. So if we go home now, you're going to see that Jupyter got not installed because Jupyter does not get installed by default. So we need to make sure that we install that. So there are two things that we need to install. We need to store Jupyter and the kernel. This is like the brains of Jupyter <laughs> to do things. So let's install those two so we can continue working on Jupyter. Now, it might be that you say, for this project, I don't want to work on Jupyter. I want to use PyCharm or whatever other thing you want to use. Install that instead, right? So now if we go back home, you can see that we have both JupyterLab and Jupyter Notebook. Perfect. Let's go to launch and we're back in business, right? So now we have all the bytes and all the stuff. This is the byte 11, the one that we did where we cleaned the code. Here's the thing. If you run this, let's start this and then run it. What happens here? So SQL little pandas, numpy, matplotlib time is not installed, it says. So you have actually a few options. You can either install them manually the same way that you've been doing throughout this uh, series, or you can create a requirement file. Let me show you. Okay, so this requirements file is just a text file, nothing else, that contains the version of pandas that we want to install, the matplotlib, you can be that specific. You can just write pandas if you don't care which version, or you can say, I want this version. These are the versions that we were using. So these are the versions that we want to install because we know they work. Unless you want to get into trouble and start to upgrade, that's up to you. So we're going to install the same that we had, which is these pandas, this matplotlib, this... Hmm? So you create a requirement text file, and then you save it on your username. So see users and then your username, right? Put it there. So once you've done that, you go back to the command line, and now you need to make sure that you're still on your environment, on the correct one. In this case, it's the crime game, right? And you just write pip install, and then you have our requirements.txt. And you see that it's going to go and look to see users root Pozuelo. Okay, so press enter. And this is going to install all the stuff that we need to run our game, hopefully. If something is left, we can add it to our list. Don't worry. Okay, so I got a small error, but that has nothing to do with our packages. So the fact that they didn't get installed, I don't care. Let's check and see if it's still working. So going back to here, probably restart, and then run, and yes, Ruth, and we are back in business, but now we are working on our environment. So this is isolated from anything else that we're going to do. And this is actually needed because otherwise it was going to be a mess. Especially for me, because I'm doing all the Python scripts, it just wasn't sustainable. So I started using environments already before Christmas. And I thought that maybe you didn't need to know about environments, but it's, I'm doing you this favor. Be better to do it from the beginning. So as you can see now it's working and it's working on our new environment. So now every time you want to develop something, you need to make sure that here you this you choose the correct environment. And that's all. So the work for you for this byte obviously is to create your own environment. 
and uh, fingers crossed and everything works well. If you follow these steps, you should not have any problem, but you never know, you never know. I cross my fingers for you. Okay, on the next bite, finally, we're going to create our own modules, separate them and start to make a better code. Now we have a better chance that we have our environment, actually. So I will see you on bite 13.